Hi, welcome to view this short video on teaching and learning methods. The aim of this video is to give you an overview of things to consider when you think about suitable teaching methods for your course. The video also introduces the Teacher's Handbook by Olli Hyppönen and Satu Linde, a nice and practical tool for choosing and performing teaching and learning activities. I hope you are already familiar with the concept of constructive alignment. To cut a long story short, it means that the learning outcomes, learning tasks and assessment activities of your course should support each other and be in line with each other, so that the intended learning outcomes determine what the students should do during the course, which then defines the teacher's actions before, during and after the teaching period. You should choose the kind of teaching methods that ensure that students will be doing the right things for their learning. You need, however, to also take into account the resources you have for your teaching – time, tools, environment, assistant workforce, and so on. Before moving on to teaching methods, a few words about working methods. By working methods, we mean the type of work done by the students. Different teaching methods typically combine several kinds of work done by the students. This is often useful because it helps making studying more interesting and develops different kinds of skills. The same working methods can be assigned to students in very different ways and they can take up very different amounts of teacher and student time. The handbook nicely illustrates ways to use the same working methods with different time budgets. Now, let's have a closer look at the categorization of working methods used in the teacher's handbook. In independent studying, the student does the given tasks physically remote from the teacher and within a given time frame. Students decide about the scheduling and allocation of time for the different tasks. The goal of independent studying is to place the responsibility for learning on the student themselves and commit them to active learning. Even independent studying, however, should not be completely independent, as studying and learning should have sufficient guidance either by the course structures, like peer evaluation tasks, or by the teacher. Contact teaching includes all learning situations where a teacher is present and actively guides the studying and learning of a group of students. Contact teaching can include lectures, tutorials, exercises, guided laboratory work, and so on. Contact teaching allows for direct interaction in order to enhance and monitor the learning situation. Group work refers to the work done in student groups independently of the teacher helping to achieve the group goals. If a teacher is present the whole time during the group work, the method is classified as contact teaching. Group work supports an active role for the students and teaches different collaboration and cooperation skills alongside the actual content to be studied. Workplace studying means working and acting in a genuine environment related to the students' studies. The students have the opportunity to apply the know-how they gain during studies to the learning of new things and to the development of their general skills related to working life and the working environment. Successful workplace studying may also create important contacts for the students for their future careers. Personal guidance refers to one-on-one -on -one interaction between the student and the teacher with the goal of promoting the student's learning and know-how. Thesis supervision is an example of personal guidance. Personal guidance allows for individual scaffolding of the learning process and provides the teacher with a close knowledge of the student's individual learning process. When selecting working methods, it is important to consider how the students will learn with them and what kind of learning each one best supports. In a way, this is exactly what teaching methods are, a planned set of student and teacher actions to support efficient learning towards certain ends. The Teacher's Handbook provides a wide selection of teaching methods and handy tools to help you to concretize your personal tasks, as well as the efforts required from the students. We'll first have a look at the description of one teaching method. Then you'll see how you can turn your selection of teaching methods into an action plan for teaching. The Teacher's Handbook contains brief introductions to 41 different teaching methods. The methods differ widely in many respects. Some are like tools that can be used in a specific teaching situation, like lectures. 
Other methods are much more extensive and may require a long time period or several different learning sessions to be completed. All the descriptions have a similar structure. The teaching methods have been divided into four groups according to their requirements for the teacher. Very easy, easy, average and demanding. However, the methods will generally become easier as the teacher acquires more experience. The first paragraph or paragraphs contain a general illustration of the method and its basic use. The strengths and challenges section explains the benefits of the method for student learning and anticipates the challenges that the teacher may face when using the method. The teacher's handbook also includes a useful tool for the practical planning of the coursework. Here's how it works. Describe the learning tasks of the students and your own teaching tasks on a weekly basis. You can keep the writing short, but remember to account for the, all the different working methods used each week. Don't forget to plan the work to be done before the actual teaching period starts. Also, make an estimate of the time the students will need to complete their tasks. The estimate should specify the time needed for the different working methods on a weekly basis and do the same thing for your own teaching and assessment tasks. Finally, calculate the total workload for both the students and yourself. To check the appropriateness of the course workload, convert the student hours to study credits. In the ECTS system, one credit is worth 27 hours. I hope you will find the teacher's handbook as useful as I have. Thanks for watching this video. Have fun with exploring the different teaching methods, trying them out and finding the most suitable ones for your own teaching.